Till now we have looked at the most simple epidemic model where we considered the most simple network and the network was in the form of a tree. Something like this. Simple. Now we know that our real world networks do not look like this. Our real world networks they look complicated and rather if you do remember the lectures from the previous weeks so you will say that a network can never look like this. There should be some triadic closures here, right? So if uh, this guy over here is a friend with both of these, there is a good chance that both of these are friends. Both of these are friends and maybe uh, th this person here can be a friend with this one. So network sh networks actually look very complicated, something like this. How can we modify our most simple branching process what we did before for a real world networks which are not trees that we are going to see in this chapter. Let's say that we have a complicated network not a tree by complicated what I mean is not a tree which looks something like this. I have some nodes A, B, C, D, E, F here and every edge has a probability P of transmitting the infection as before. So everything is same, every edge is having the same probability. The only difference is in the layout of the network. Instead of the tree, we have taken a proper network. Let's say it's connected to D also here. And the network looks something like this. Now I want to simulate the spreading of a contagion here. How do we do that? Let's say initially A is infected. And now A has three neighbors, B, C and D. And it tries to infect each of these again independently with a probability P. So again here are three independent processes. We can flip a coin for the edge A to C and if head comes we infect C. Similarly we can flip a coin for the edge A to D and if a head comes we mark D as infected and same thing we can repeat for B. So maybe A is able to infect B and C. How can I lay out, lay out it in the form of a tree? What is happening here? Let us see. Here is A and A was having three neighbors B, C and D and A was able to infect B and C. And now you see A's role is over. I'll discuss more about it. What I mean here in a branching model also at this step A's role was over. A got one chance to infect and A infected B and C. Now it is B and C's turn. Now B and C will go ahead and see which of their neighbors they can infect. Why so? It should be so, right? Because if A keeps getting a chance, rather if every node keeps getting a chance to infect their neighbors at every time period, then this entire network will get infected. And that's not what happens in the in our real world also, right? You get infected from some disease, and then you remain infected for some period of time. During this time you keep infecting other people and after that you might recover from the disease. So we need a better model here. Let's, uh, uh, let's make this picture more clear. So what we'll be doing now is we'll be looking at a very realistic disease is spreading model. Branching process was something very theoretical and very simple. Now we are moving little bit more towards what happens in the real world and we are going to study a brand new model not for the tree networks but for any kind of networks and the model is SIR epidemic model. Why is it called SIR epidemic model is because it tells you it talks about three life cycles of an infection. So whenever you get infected from a disease, you mainly pass through three phases. The first one is susceptible. Susceptible is the one where you are happily living your life. You are not infected from any disease. You are not infected from the disease. And then the second stage is infected. So you come in contact with somebody who is infected and you get infected. And the last one is recovered or removed. Recovered or removed is something that needs to be uh, taken very seriously here. Something which is very important. What do we mean by recovered and removed here is what makes this model the more what makes this model special. This SIR model it is used for two kinds of diseases. First kind of diseases. First kind of diseases something which is a terminal illness. What happens in the case of a terminal illness is patient ultimately dies away. 
तो यू आर ससेप्टिबल एंड देन यू गेट इन्फेक्टेड एंड फाइनली यू विल बी किल्ड बाई द डिजीज एंड वेन यू गेट किल्ड बाई द डिजीज यू विल बी रिमूव फ्रॉम द नेटवर्क और अ सेकेंड केस सेकेंड केस इज द डिजीज इज समथिंग लाइक दैट विच कैन अकर टू यू ओनली वंस इन योर लाइफ टाइम समथिंग लाइक मीजल्स you are susceptible and then you get infected from measles now what will happen when you get infected from measles is your body will develop a lifetime immunity against this disease and you are never going to catch this disease again that time we say that you are recovered you are never going to go from infected back to the susceptible this disease is going to happen to you only once in your lifetime so either you will gain a permanent immunity or you will be killed by this disease so that is our sir epidemic model in our next lecture we'll see how can i uh, we'll see how can we simulate this uh, uh, model on an actual network we are going to do that so for going so, so we are having so a node can here exist in three states as we saw and exactly one state at a time you can't be susceptible and infected at the same time and infected and recovered both at the same time you can be only in one phase at one time so if you are susceptible i am going to show you by a blue circle if you are infected i am going to show you by an infected circle i'll tell you what this ti is and if you are recovered or removed i'm going to show you by a yellow circle so yellow circles can be ignored from our network because they have recovered and removed they have nothing to do with the spreading of the disease now what is this ti here ti here is again something very logical what is ti when you get infected there is some time period for which you remain infected it can be one day two day one week two weeks during this time only you are going to infect other people so ti defines the time for which you are going to remain infected so maybe for the flu this time can be let's say 3 days so during these 3 days you will be infected with flu and you will keep infecting other people if you look at this figure here where i said that here is a and then a infected these two people b and c and then we said that a's role is over and these are b and c who are going to further infect other people can you tell me what is the value of ti here so ti the time for which you are infecting here is 1 right because if it was 2 after a infected b and c a will again get a chance to infect once more we we'll look at it in detail i just wanted to tell you the use of ti so this is it this is sir model and in our next lecture we'll see that how we can simulate this sir model on a given network